Illustrative Math, Algebra 2, Unit 7, Lesson 1 is called Being Skeptical. So our goals today are I can decide if a study is good or bad based on evidence. I can recognize, I wrote recognize twice on there. Oops. I can recognize the purposes of and differences among sample surveys, experiments, and observational studies. And I understand statistics as a process for making inferences about population parameters based on data from a statistical study. Seems like a lot, but it's not really too bad. All right, so our warm up. Um, a graph and two headlines from a website are shown. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Pause the video. Take a look. All right, um, so here's my graph. A um, couple things that I noticed before I show you what I wrote. Um, it goes from a period of 2000 up to 2012. Um, I noticed that the red line does not look like a best fit because most of the data is below it. Um, it looks more like an average rate of change because it starts at the starting point and ends at the ending point. Um, let's see what else did I put. Um, the majority of the black graph is well below the red dotted line. Already said that. Um, the y values are very small. Look at the y axis. See how they only go by 0.2 there? Um, and they represent temperature change. So look, change in global temperature. So, um, so when it means temperature change um, and not the actual temperature, any positive value here is actually means that the temperature is increasing. In order to decrease, it would have to dip below zero, be negative down here. So um, although it looks like it's going down, the temperature is still increasing. I wonder, are these two graphs related or are they totally separate? Could the red graph be just some other graph and be coincidence that it ends and starts at the same points of the black graph? Um, the red graph, I know, I, I wonder, it's obviously not a best fit, but I wonder what it is. Um, does the red represent average rate of change? Talked about that. And what would it look like if it goes on for more time in either direction, really? Okay, what would the graph be? This is only a snapshot of 12 years. All right, so then we have this um, headline here, 80% of dentists recommend Acme toothpaste. So um, I noticed that it seems like Acme toothpaste is highly recommended by dentists, but it doesn't say why it's recommended. Um, I wonder, do they recommend other brands also? Um, do they... Or do they just recommend using any toothpaste? And this Acme company decided to run with that. Okay, so a lot of questions there with that. Um, but definitely something that um, a brand could use in their favor to make it twisted and seem like it's more in their favor than in reality. Um, all right, Pythagoras brand rulers measure 20% better. I noticed that at first glance with that statement, it appears that Pythagoras brand rulers are better than a normal ruler. Um, I wonder what specifically makes these rulers better. Um, I said 20% better than what? It doesn't say 20% better than, you know, what other brand or whatever. And then, and then I put, how do you measure something better? Isn't one inch equal to one inch? Um, so a lot of questions with these statements, but, um, you know, that's what a lot of, um, a lot of, products they try to do and that's advertising for you you try to spin it to make it look better um, so our job in mathematics is to understand what is misleading and what is um, accurate statistical information all right so um, another notice and wonder here I don't think this is in your book but um, how does having the whole graph tell a different story than just having the part from 98 to 2012? I think it was 2000 to 2012. I don't know why that says 98, but here's the whole graph. Um, so again, same idea starting, you know, this is the red is looks like appears to be an average rate of change starts at the starting point ends at the ending point. Um, so what are some things we notice here? Um, I just put some observations. So let's see here in the whole graph, you can see that the slope of the red line is positive over that's a 112 year period. Um, meaning that the temperature is increasing over that time. All right, but here's the thing. You could find other 12-year periods, um, kind of like we had on the last one. We had 
2000 to 2012 right there. You can find, whoops, you can find other 12 year periods where it's negative or zero. So like, for instance, if I looked at this 12 year period, like 1960 to 1962, that's almost going to be like zero. Okay. Cause it'd be a horizontal line. If I connected, you know, if I connected the slope in nine or the point at 1960, to the point in 1962, it's almost zero. It's definitely going to be negative on that 12 year period. Um, you know, again, you could, you could look at this 12 year period from here, 1940 to 1952. That's definitely going down. So it's very misleading. Ours was from 2000 right here to 2012, which was that line right there. So again, much um, there are many different things that you could you could ask about this and ways you could spin it. Um, another thing I observed: the red line appears to not be a best fit line. It's more of an average rate of change because we're going from the starting point to the ending point. Um, this could be misleading because the best fit line could look much different. Okay. All right. Here's some information that you're going to need to know here. You're going to want to write these down somewhere. So I'd pause the video. Um, a survey, um, is a set of questions given to people to seek their responses. Observational studies collect data without influencing things directly and experimental studies collect data by directly influencing something to determine how another thing is changed usually usually you see a test group or a placebo um, given um, so that you can measure it um, against against um, you know not not influencing them all right um, so here's what we're going to do now one partner is going to read the statistical question and study design to the other partner the reader should then sort the item into the type of study described so these are our three choices um then the other person should decide whether it's good or bad and explain the reasoning and then after the discussion switch roles and have the other partner read the next okay so we'll just do this kind of all together here all right here we go here's the first one if you want to pause the video and try it on your own you can um, i'll just read them and go through so number one why are students missing so much school in the district? A district administrator selects 300 student names at random from the enrollment list and sends a letter to each student's home. The letter includes a page to be returned to their school signed by a parent or guardian. The page asks, how many days has your student missed school this year? And what are the reasons for missing school on those days? So I'd say, obviously, this is going to be a survey. Um, the design is okay. It'll, it, you know, we have a large sample space, 300 people, um, and it's okay. But um, the problem is some parents may not remember all the reasons their child missed school. You know, if kids, you know, they're not going to remember days um, earlier in the year if it's, if it's later. Um, and some parents might not return the, 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 the survey to the school. All right, number two, why are students missing so much school in the district? A district administrator chooses one of the elementary schools in the district and asks the principal to provide information about the number of absences and excuse notes provided to the school. All right, that's obviously an observational study because the principal is observing and he's not trying to influence anybody. Um, this design is bad because it only uses one single elementary school. All right, if you're looking at the whole district, you don't want to narrowly restrict your study to elementary to one elementary school um, that that school you know could have had a breakout of an illness among students um, which might not represent all students well in the district also it doesn't include older students who often miss school for different reasons than elementary school students okay you know they older students have different reasons than the younger students so this is this is a bad study it's it's very um, not a good representation of what you're trying to find all right, number three, what type of sweetener do flies prefer? Scientist puts the same amount of each sweetener into different bowls of water and counts number of flies that drink from each bowl in four hours. All right, this is an observational study. They're observing, they're not trying to influence anything. Design is good, the flies should be attracted to the sweetener that they like to drink more often from, and they'll drink more often from that bowl. All right, so that's not a bad study. Um, 
What type of sweetener do flies prefer? Scientist divides the flies into different groups and gives each group only water with a certain type of sweetener in it for three days. Scientist then does, does a test on each group to see how well the flies can fly through a maze. This is an experimental study because they're doing an experiment. Um, this is a bad design though. It doesn't really answer the, the original question. Um, it's, it's more so testing how the sweeteners affect the fly's ability to fly. It doesn't necessarily choose what's their preference. It's giving them um, a specific type of sweetener. It's not letting them um, choose the one that they prefer. So this would be a very bad, bad study for that question. All right, number five. Is there a link between dark chocolate and weight loss when compared to milk chocolate? A nutritionist, nutritionist asked five friends to eat dark chocolate along with their usual food for six months and five other friends to eat milk chocolate along with their usual food for six months. The nutritionist then compares their weight after six months to their weight before eating the different chocolates. Okay, this is an experimental study. They are trying to influence. Um, this design is bad. There's not many people in the study. All right, five, two groups of five is very small. Um, they're all friends, so it may not you may not be able to determine other variables like diet and exercise level. Okay, if they you know five of the friends are athletes and they work out a lot, that could influence um, the results. Um, a lot of different variables there uh, that are not going to answer that question. So that's a bad study. All right, number six. Same question, is there a link between dark chocolate and weight loss when compared to milk chocolate? A nutritionist gathers 60 people, selected at random, then randomly assigns half of the group to eat a single dark chocolate bar after dinner each night, the other half to eat a single milk chocolate bar after dinner each night for six months. Everyone is to keep track of the other food they eat in an app provided. The nutritionist then compares each person's weight after six months to their weight before eating the different chocolates, accounting for only calories consumed. All right, this is again an experimental study. It's a good design. Um, it shows participants at random. Um, bigger sample space, you have 60 people, better than, than 10 like the other one. Um, obviously the randomness has different types of people in each group. Um, so, and it's a long time, it's six months, so I'd say it's a decent study. All right, number seven, do voters in the district favor a sales tax increase of 1% to fund the parks and recreation department? Politician sends a letter to 300 voters in the district asking, would you pay extra money on your essential groceries to hire more government workers to plant flowers around the town? Okay, this is a survey. Not a good design. The question places unfair emphasis on voters for paying extra money for something that seems small, like flowers. The question does not directly answer what the research question is asking. It doesn't say anything about um, parks and recreation department. Um, you know, it's just not going to answer the question that you're seeking. Number eight, do voters in district favor sales? Same question. Um, Sales increase of 1% to fund parks and recreation department. Politician sends a letter to 300 voters, select at random in the district asking, would you be in favor of a 1% increase in sales tax to fund the parks and recreation department in town? Survey, that's an okay design. It asks directly uh, what you're seeking and it doesn't try to encourage one answer or the other. You, know, you gotta be careful if you're leading the survey participant to respond a certain way. All right, so um, lesson synthesis. Why is it important for a study to be designed well? Obviously, if the study is not designed well, then it will not answer the question being asked. Um, it could also provide misleading data that, that is not accurate. All right, next one. If you wanted to estimate the percentage of people who plan to watch a major sporting event, why would it be better to select people at random than select people who play the sport? Well, obviously, if you only select football players and you ask how many people are going to watch a football game, they're probably more likely to watch it because they're interested in it. So um, 
If you only select people who play the sport, then you would only have one part of the population. Selecting people at random will allow you to sample, your sample to be more representative of the whole population. Okay, always want random samples. It'll be much more accurate unless you're trying to focus on a specific group of people. All right, what type of study do you think would conduct do you, you think you would conduct to estimate the percentage of people who plan to watch the major sporting event and explain your reasoning? I would probably do a survey because you would need people to respond to a question to know what their plans are. Why do we collect data when conducting a survey? It allows us to make inferences and draw conclusions about population parameters. It can help us answer statistical questions. All right, last one on this slide. An experiment that studies how energy drinks impact following directions has two groups. One group of 25 people that is given an energy drink to drink, and one group of 25 people that is given water to drink. Why is it important for the study, to the study for the participants to be randomly assigned to each group? Well, you want to make sure that other factors are not responsible for any differences observed in the results. So, for example, if you do not assign them randomly, you could end up with a large number of people that prefer energy drinks in one group and a large number of people that do not like energy drinks in the other group. Again, always want it random. Um, otherwise, you, you could have misleading data. All right, back to our goals. I can decide if a study is good or bad based on evidence. I recognize the difference between a survey, observational study, or experimental study. Um, last one, I understand why randomization is important in the design of a study. All right, our cool down. A company that produces television shows is interested in what type of show people would like to watch for a prime time slot. So we got three choices here, um, three categories, crime drama, animated comedy, or reality contest. So number one, explain why it is better to select people for the survey using a random process rather than selecting people for this survey who say they watch television with their children. Well, obviously, if the people selected watch television with their children, they may be more likely to choose animated comedy. Um, random sample would definitely be better. All right, number two, the company asks, which show would you be most likely to watch during prime time? Mr. Winslow, Kibble, Extreme Mountain Hunter, a show in which 20 contestants attempt to climb some of the tallest mountains in the world using only equip equipment they create from nature. Will this question likely produce data that would allow the company to answer the question they're interested in and explain your reasoning? Um, this one, they give us a description. This is obviously a reality contest here, all right? I don't know what Mr. Winslow or Mr. Kibble is. I don't know if they're crime drama or animated drama. I would assume one is crime drama and one is animated comedy. We just don't know. Um, so I would say yes, as long as these are one of each. As long as, like, say, you know, say this one is crime drama. And then this one is animated comedy. All right, then we're good. Um, but... Uh, if you knew what type of TV shows they were, obviously you'd have to have one of each. Um, it'd be better, though, if you have a larger list of various choices of all three types because even though there may be one of each type on this list, it's possible that someone may may like reality television, but reality television, but just not that particular show. So, like, maybe you watched Extreme Mountain Hunter and you're like, oh, my gosh, I hate that show. Extreme Mountain Hunter is no good. But you like other reality contests. Um that would that would skew the data there so you know a bigger list with with a lot of different choices would would be better in that situation so thanks for watching this video and uh we'll see you next time